well hello so uh, these are the three tab uh, panels I made um, I might be able to zoom in a little bit or at least lower you a little bit something like this so we got a few different tastes so this is the first one this is the well, the 9 micron aluminum foil and 12 micron uh, mylar, the version 10. Uh, well, I tuned those uh, to have uh, kind of the same resonance, uh, so it would be uh, nicer to, well, measure them and see what the differences are, because I want to know what the difference is in using thicker aluminum foil. So this uses 9, uh, this uses 12. Uh, stated here as well and this uses 25 now this one ha has some pinholes it's kind of hard to see but um, I had another panel of this one but the resonance was uh, a little bit too low so I did not want to use it with these panels uh, but this one had like 0 0.18 ohm I believe, yeah, a higher resistance than the other panel. So actually it should be the resistance or impedance of the other panel, but since the resonance was so low, I'm going to use this one. Uh, and that might have to do with the way I etch or pinholes, and I see quite a lot of them. Uh, so yeah, it is apparently, it might be visible as well. I etch them differently. You can see actually it's kind of, this one is really shiny, this one is matte. This one is a little bit more shiny as well. So what I think, this is the thickest. I First of all I used a different cleaning agent to clean the aluminum before printing and I'm not sure if that's a good idea because this one looks better. Uh, but also I think uh, undercutting and cutting in this, <coughs> uh, etching in this tiny pinholes is uh, is more of a matter of time this stuff is so thin uh, the bulk is gone in, in like really fast with this stuff the thicker stuff it, it's sitting in this etching bath longer and it managed to cut in all the pinholes as well so that's kind of a um, well I don't know learning curve I don't know so it might be more useful to use a more potent mixture to do this heavier stuff and hopefully get the same result as thinner foil when etching. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, I made like this um, test baffle uh, based on a normal test baffle used in the industry but scaled down because I'm not gonna put in 5 inch woofers and such but only these things. Uh, uh, that and also I don't have room for a 2 meter wide thing. So uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the impedance differences as well as uh, that you can clearly see where the resonance is because it's not damped at all at the moment. Uh, and then we're gonna put it in a test baffle, uh, add some damping but the same damping for all three and see what happens especially in, um, in the top end. Um, it's too bad I don't own all the foils I wish I owned because there is also a thicker mylar version of the same stuff, kind of, at least for the 25 micron and the 12, I believe. Um, but I noticed in the B&G that they use really thick foil and really thick aluminum, which is weird, you would expect a tweeter to be as light as possible, but uh, they might actually kind of get the uh, response straight by adding weight and being able to stretch it up harder as well. So who knows? But uh, yeah, I have to ask the guys I buy this stuff from if I if they can send me some samples as well when I buy this one, if this works out at least. I buy a roll of this stuff and if they can send me some samples of the heavier stuff as well. Because I don't want to own a gazillion meters of uh, different foils. Although I already do, but don't want to make it worse. So, uh, yeah, let's go to the 
dark living room because I don't have much light there, but it's gonna be fine. Okay, so, uh, construction. Mike here is one meter away, uh, Bethel, Mike is on axis. Uh, this is the 9 micron version and I believe it was 5.2 ohm. I'll check it later in the impedance measurement. Um, I used 2.85 volt. There is a voltage meter underneath this panel. There in the back. Um, it measures 1.85 volt with a 1k tone. So, at least uh, I should be able to calculate everything back. It's not well damped. Uh, this is the foil. Normally I use tapes on the sides uh, of the foil because there is some resonance there where the tape meets the spacer. I'm not going to do that right now. So there will be resonances. That's no problem. I'm just wondering what ha what's happening in the top hand uh, in, be well, in between these foils. What the differences are. So don't blame anything, uh, well, whatever. There will be resonances and uh, bad sounding stuff. Uh, I do limit the tweeter so I don't fry it. At 350, uh, 48 dB per octave, because uh, I'm not interested in the stuff underneath 350 or even at 350 because it's a tweeter, it's not a mid-range. So. There's one thing I wanna... Yeah, that's stupid. I'm not sure if it's calibrated in dB scale because I do have a dB meter so I can check that still and see if that's uh, correct. Let's do that with this one. So I am gonna make an SPL measurement at the same spot and see if it uh, it's the same as the mic says it is with my uh, meter. Not sure why it's so dark, but uh, so calibrate. I uh, don't want to use a subwoofer uh, signal. No. The meat, it says, uh, let's say seventy five. So it's funny that uh, in uh, uh, Room Q Wizard it was uh, a few dB less. So I'm gonna remeasure this one so the actual scale is correct as well. That's my meter making a beep. So I have to remeasure the other one as well, which is too bad. So this is the 12 micron, 12 micron. Now have to re remeasure the other one. Okay. Let's remeasure this one. Let's 
Nein, Mikro. Ja, was ist das? That's definitely uh, louder. Hmm. Uh, twenty five micron. Okay, so I got my measurements. Uh, I will combine them, I think, with uh, the rest of the stuff. Huh, it's not that efficient to be honest, if this is correct. That's weird. Hmm. Well, let's discuss that later.